All right, I'd like you to see if you can spot them. These are really easy mistakes to make, but they're also really easy mistakes to avoid if you know what to do. And if you don't, it can take hours or days to fix. All right, first thing, let's go into our view. This can be a really easy one to miss. To show you what's wrong, I'll start by clicking on this bottom right hand corner. And if I hold shift and I can see my angle just below where my cursor is, says 180 degrees. So if I pull this all the way across, this wall isn't straight. This can happen in a few situations. If someone's just trying to trace over a set of plans by clicking on each of the different walls, or even if it's just a sketch and you're not keeping an eye on the angle. This is where everything goes wrong. They do match up with what's shown on the plan, but they aren't accurate, even if you rescale them. So when we're drawing, so from the very first click in a project, we're always holding in that shift key, ensuring that we're at 90 degrees, zero degrees, or 180 degrees. Holding in shift, then tapping tab once so we can enter in our dimension, say 2000 and enter. The danger of doing it this way is that even if we try and do it properly now, the correct method right now, Holding my line up vertically, you'll notice here that the angle of the wall, even though we held in shift, isn't set to 90 degrees. Now, this is probably because it's referencing a nearby wall that it's trying to be parallel with. Our wall won't be straight or accurate. Now, these angled walls actually have a secondary impact, which brings us to the second mistake, which is just here. So if you look at these dimensions, you'll see what's going on. Whenever we're drafting a set of plans, we're always finishing our dimensions to zero or to five. A dimension in between these is typically a bad sign that a wall is slightly off or has accidentally been altered. Now, we can remedy some of these by, say, clicking on a wall, tapping Control E to rotate, clicking on the wall once, then pulling the wall down, holding in shift, and then clicking once. The trouble is, if every other wall and element that it's referencing off isn't at 90 degrees, you can spend a lot of time troubleshooting to try and figure out what walls are straight and which ones aren't. So always best to start this from the beginning. The other thing that you might have noticed is the color of these plants. These colors represent pen weights, and pen weights are just pen thickness. If I right click, then turn on true line weight, and then zoom in on the plan, you'll notice that different colored lines have different thicknesses. This is a way for us to track what we are putting emphasis on on a set of plans. This is very useful while we're drafting, but when we're publishing a set of plans, it only takes a few extra steps to either change this to grayscale, black and white, or better yet, leaving it as the defined pen set, but having the pen set so that these pens are set to black. At the moment, I like to have a darker gray for the inside of the walls, so we can delineate between the inside and the outside, as well as the inside fill of the wall. This is a preference thing, but at least having the plans so that they're black and white makes things so much more readable, not to mention more aesthetic. I've actually got a dedicated video covering every single step on how to create the set of floor plans, which I'll put a link to just over here. If you do like learning things step by step, I've also created a free poster of the brick veneer detail that I covered in this video just over here, which is available over on the website.